Hello, everybody. Welcome to the NJACAC STEM Virtual College Fair, New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling. I'm Julian. I'm going to be the facilitator tonight. And if you have any questions, we're going to get started with some housekeeping tips. So those questions can be put into the chat box, which is going to be at the bottom of your screen. Remember, you can ask any question at any time. Uh, throughout the entire session to whichever institution you would like. Just make sure that you address that institution so that way they know to answer the question uh, that you are asking them. Your camera and microphone are going to be turned off through the session. We can't see you, but you will be able to see us. And then you can sign up for another session tonight if you go to strivescan.com. If you want to look back at this recording after it is done tonight, you can do so in about a week. It'll be on the same page that you registered. So I am going to start giving the floor over to UMass Boston, and they are going to be our first uh, institution to share tonight. Just remember, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and do so by going to the Q&A button. Awesome. Thanks, Julian. OK, well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, I'm just going to just dive uh, right on in so don't have too much time. Um, but I'm here to talk about UMass Boston. So anything specifically related to UMB, the city of Boston, or anything in those two little realms, um, I'd be more than happy to answer. But for the purpose of this presentation, I just condensed the five main reasons why someone might choose to attend UMass Boston. Now, disclaimer, we're an institution of 13,000 students, 16,000 when you encompass that with the grad school. So there's clearly 16,000 different reasons why someone might choose to go to UMass Boston, but these are my personal five reasons why someone might um, choose UMB. And first off the bat is always location. Um, where we're located is indeed in the city of Boston. Of course, it's in our name, um, but we're not located in downtown Boston. Now, you all might be coming from New Jersey and you might not have never been up to Boston before. Boston is a very unique city where we are one of the largest metro areas not only in the Northeast, but in the United States. However, the city of Boston itself is really compact. Now, UMass Boston, however, we're not located in downtown Boston. We're located on a peninsula called Columbia Point. So three sides of campus is actually surrounded by body water. So what's on your screen right now is a picture of students hanging out on our campus. It's what's called a harbor walk. And yes, this was taken before COVID, so that's why they're not social dis distancing or wearing their masks. But you can see to the right, that that is the Atlantic Ocean, that's the Boston Harbor. So we're a harbor front campus. Um, the nice thing about the UMass Boston campus, although we are located in the big city of Boston, our campus is completely enclosed together on the peninsula. So when you're looking at the academic buildings, the residence halls, the dining facilities, the athletic facilities, everything UMass Boston related is going to be on that peninsula together. However, if you look in the backdrop behind the, the group of students, you can see the city skyline. You, downtown Boston is only five to 10 minutes away. Um, and students really get the opportunity to access the city and its resources via public transportation. So coming up to Boston from the Mid-Atlantic, you might not have a car, or even if you do, you can bring your car to campus. But however, when you get to campus, you really won't have to get here. This is the train system, and it might look a little overbearing at first, but trust me, in a few months, and if give it a couple of weeks, you're going to be able to master this. They even make a color coinage for you, which is really nice. But we have our own uh, train station um, off the red line, and the red line will take you anywhere in the, into the city of Boston. Um, and once you get into the city of Boston, um, there's so much to do. Uh, we do say that um, Boston is America's college town because every single year, 300,000 plus college students pack their bags and move to the city every single fall. So if you look at the statistical breakdown, one out of every five of the city residents is actually a college age student. Um, so it's a lively city, especially with the new wave of students coming in every single fall, but it also is uh, a leader in a lot of different industries like tech, medicine, education, business, the list goes on and on. So being the public um, research institution that the city has to offer, our students aren't even going out there for enjoyment, but they're also going out there for internships um, and work experience. Okay. Moving along, um, academics at UMass Boston, we have over 80 different academic programs and a good portion of them are STEM related. Um, we have engineering to medicine to um, a plethora of other STEM related majors. Um, the full listing of our majors are located on our website. I don't have enough time to go over them right now, but the typical class size at UMass Boston is about 28 students, especially for those STEM related programs. So whether you're in a nursing class, engineering or mathematics, natural sciences, et cetera, um, what's on your screen right now is a picture pre-COVID. So it's not exactly what our campus looks like now with the COVID precautions, but 
um, you can find yourself to be in a classroom setting like that. Um, and we are a research institution, so while you're conducting um, your academics, you also get that hands-on learning um, from your professors. Um, you can start your research experience as early as your freshman year. So if there's a research project that's of interest of you, don't be shy, take that initiative, start the conversation with your faculty advisor, um, and you can start conducting your research project as early as your uh, freshman year. Uh, every single year we receive $60 million in, in funding for research alone, and that projected figure is always um, projected to grow. Okay, moving along, um, the value behind UMass Boston is something that I always like to touch base because we're at a pretty unique situation in the city of Boston. We are the only public four-year research institution, and although you are necessarily going to be an in-state student, we still give um, in-state well, discount tuition, excuse me, um, for our out-of-state students. So this is just the um, Director of Financial Aid, um, Katie Lynch, who reiterates the mission of keeping UMass Boston as affordable um, as possible, especially for our students come from out-of-state, so students can receive scholarship money um, during the admissions process, and then how we um, uh, delegate financial aid is through the FAFSA form. So that's something that I always like to uh, tell everyone about. Um, personally, my favorite part, about it, number four is our diversity. So at UMass Boston, um, we are extremely proud of our diversity. And this is one thing that you're gonna hear a lot while stepping for onto our campus. Um, we are one of the most diverse schools in the United States. Uh, we were ranked the third most diverse institution in the 2019 academic year. So we are extremely proud of the diversity of our 65 of our students are students of color with about a 12 to 15% international student population. Uh, the stigma I believe that state institutions typically get is that we're just accommodating students from the state of Massachusetts because we're an urban campus, we're just accommodating students from the city of Boston. And at UMass Boston, that's not the case at all. We have about 40 different states represented on campus, uh, even Alaska and Hawaii, yes, um, with over 113 countries worldwide. And I see Julian coming in, so I just want to wrap it up because soon my time's coming down. And then the last part is this, the transformation piece. Um, so at UMass Boston, we've been um, re-gentrifying our entire campus, new academic facilities, um, new residence halls, a new baseball stadium, um, just make it nice for when you come visit after the pandemic. And I hope that wasn't too long. I hope you saved my six minutes, but if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to put it in the Q&A. That was perfect, Brian. Thank you so much, UMass Boston. And we are going to allow some time for San Diego State University to get their screen share up and running. Um, in that meantime, really quick, just make sure that you are addressing the college that you want to answer your question by just putting them and their name into the Q&A chat box along with your question. So we'll leave it over to uh, San Diego State University. I think you're on mute there, Danielle. Thanks, Julian. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Danielle Toglia. I'm representing San Diego State University tonight. I'm one of the out-of-state recruiters. And what that basically means is that I work with students from both New York and New Jersey in helping them transition, of course, to San Diego. Um, like you, I live 3,000 miles from the campus. I, I reside in my home state of New Jersey. Um, so I'm always more than happy to talk to students about this transition. We are a, a, a very large university at San Diego State University with almost 30,000 undergraduate students. And I know that can, that can seem quite overwhelming, but we have a lot of opportunity for you and I wanna talk about that tonight. We actually rank eighth nationally in graduation rate and performance by US News and World Report. We are a top 30 best value by Forbes. So it's a great bang for your buck in terms of attending San Diego State University, which is an out of state public institution. We rank fifth nationally in the amount of students that we send to study abroad opportunities, and we have over 600 options for students. <clears throat> and we have almost 100 academic programs at the undergraduate level alone, uh, 202 programs in total. We are a comprehensive research university, which means that for students interested in the STEM, there is a wide variety of opportunity, both in the classroom, and of course, the ability to put that into practice outside of the classroom. And I'm going to speak to that in a moment. We are located in San Diego. San Diego boasts uh, a temperature of between 60 and 80 degrees, about 360 days a year. So we're quite lucky. We are close to the downtown, to the beaches, the mountains, the desert, to the airport. So it's very easy and convenient to travel, even though we are a large distance away. And we have the only um, public transportation stop 
by the trolley uh, of a four-year university in San Diego. So we're very lucky that students have access to the trolley. They don't need to worry about a car to get around. They can hop on the trolley to get to any of the resources that are off of the campus. The campus, of course, um, is located in a great uh, opportunity in a great section, uh, a neighborhood that is um, quite uh, quite easy to get around um, and obviously opportunity for things like uh, hands-on education, right? Internship, cooperative education programs, research uh, both on and off campus, as well as service learning curriculum. Our colleges include uh, a College of Engineering, which I want to mention first, given that we are talking STEM. We have programs in civil, mechanical, electrical, environmental, aerospace, construction and computer engineering. And all of these programs are housed in a um, 85,000 square foot, $90 million um, interdisciplinary center, which is Lee Green, um, and obviously allows you the, uh, the opportunity to really to connect with faculty, to meet other students from your discipline and to work together collaboratively. Um, we have 3,472 students across all of our accredited engineering programs, um, and they are all ABET accredited. Um, we also have a School of Health Sciences, as you can see. Uh, the seven majors offer you a wide variety. Our most competitive major sits here in nursing, and the nursing program is a program you do have to apply to from high school, so I do mention that. Um, we have 4,800 students in health sciences. Uh, and human services. So it is, again, a large school, very popular at, at the university. And then in addition to that, we have a school of sciences. So if you're looking for those traditional programs that you've been accustomed to since uh, freshman year of high school, maybe biology, chemistry, physics, as well as uh, programs in psychology, mathematics, statistics, you'll find them in the College of Sciences with about 4,701 students enrolled. Um, so our, our, our very largest schools actually accommodate the STEM programs uh, as um, an institution. I mentioned those hands-on opportunities. Last year, we gave away $148 million in research grant money to students. And we had students that did research at places like the National Science Foundation, NASA, the National Institute of Health, and the Department of Energy. So we are excited that students can gain that real life experience and put into practice the theory that they're learning in the classroom. We also want to encourage students to think about an internship. Uh, I mentioned nonprofits, um, healthcare facilities, hospitals, pharmacies, doctor's offices, private sector, business organizations. Um, and just a few examples, we had students do internship last year at the Mount Laguna Observatory, the Santa Margarita Ecological Reserve, the Coastal and Marine Institute, the Center for Clinical Neuroscience and the Sharp Healthcare Human Patient Simulation Center. So we're definitely looking at students, again, looking for hands-on opportunities. We're a really large place. We work hard, but we play hard. We have about 300 clubs and organizations to choose from. Some of our clubs also include honor societies, Greek organizations, as well as clubs and organizations that have a STEM lean. So for example, the cyber team, the gaming team, uh, engineers Without Borders. Um, we have the Society of Black Engineers, the Society of Hispanic Engineers, the Society of Women Engineers. The list really grows. And every year we add a number of clubs and activities to that list because we have students that want to bring with them their passion and interest to SDSU. Not hard to do, you only need five other signatures. We also have a Division I Athletic Association. Uh, so if you are interested in athletics in any way, shape or form, could be a good opportunity for you. And we do have some housing opportunities for students as we do house over 7,000 students in uh, our communities on campus, including men engaging in science and technology and women in science and engineering. So there is a heavy lean in the STEM fields, obviously at SDSU among others. We want your skills to be transferable no matter what you'd like to do. And we can talk more about that, of course, personally, in case you do want to connect. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Danielle and San Diego State University. We are gonna start moving over to Gwynedd Mercy University. And while they are getting their screen share popped up, just wanna to continue to encourage you to sign up for some more sessions. You can do so by going to strivescan.com and we'll leave the floor over to Gwynedd University.
I'm not sure there if you're are. on me. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Wow, that was difficult. <laughs> Thank you all. So my name is Alex Barraza. I'm talking to you today. Uh, we're discussing Gwen and Mercy University. Um, really, it's is a crazy format. This is the first time I'm in this format. So please bear with me and I hope uh, you guys can learn something about the school and I can answer any questions. You can again, um, hit me up in the chat or the question area. Uh, but Gwen and Mercy University, so picture yourself here, a uh, video we don't have time for. Actually, we were founded in 1948 by the Sister of Mercy of the Americas. So we are a Catholic school, um, but all faiths, lack of faith, uh, genders, equity, uh, every type of person uh, or uh, being, uh, of any sort is welcome at Gwynedd. So we are not a Catholic only, Catholic for Catholics. Um, we are a school that welcomes all backgrounds and faiths and even lack of faith. If you don't have faith, maybe we can help you with that as well. Uh, we're about 1930 undergraduate students. Um, about a hundred, actually a hundred percent of our first time full-time students receive financial aid, um, including generous scholarships. We have about a 314 acre campus it says 30 minutes from Philadelphia. I have to say we're nine miles from Philly and quite frankly, that can take any amount of time available. Um, uh, but there is a train service here and our public safety will take you to and from the train 24 seven. So if there's a train running, we can get you right to the train and back from the train. Uh, our student to faculty ratio, this is not including teaching or graduate assistance uh, is 10 to one. And we have about 30 majors and 15 minors. So looking at the majors um, on the right side, you'll notice our nursing and health professions. Nursing makes up approximately 60% of the applications we receive, uh, about 50% of the students that enroll in the, in the university each fall are nursing students. Uh, but we also have medical lab science, uh, occupational science, which leads, that's our pre-OT program, our occupational therapy, um, three plus two MSOT, radiation therapy, radiological therapy, or technology, and respiratory care. We also have biology, computer information science, which interesting with that, there's a concentration in artificial intelligence and machine learning that is pretty amazing. Uh, we built a new center for that just recently, uh, cybersecurity and web design multimedia. Uh, additionally, in our uh, business and education school, we actually have digital communications with our Digicom. Um, that is something that for STEM majors, there may be some interest there. Um, one area that I'd like to talk about, we actually call it a Griffin Edge. So the Griffin Edge is what we as basically as Gwinnett University uh, Griffins, we think that you can get out of our school. So basically we took a bunch of interviews with current students, alumni, on our faculty, and we came up with these five E's. And basically, here's the main difference. Most schools will actually say, what a typical student would say is, I conducted research as an undergraduate student. What our students that go through the Griffin Edge would say, the opportunity to conduct my own research along with an expert faculty taught me the importance of being exact in my data collection and analysis. I was even able to present my findings at our annual research conference. It allows you to be a little bit more set, defined, and detailed. Um, this is an example, Amanda Perone, um, excellent. She graduated magna cum laude with a BS in biology, minors in chemistry and psychology. Uh, connection through eSTEM, working as a um, researcher with our faculty as well as other local universities. Again, close to Philadelphia, there's a number of large universities. Um, she worked with Philly Cure HD, which worked with people with Huntington, Huntington's disease. And right now she's living her dream. So Merck is right next door. Um, one of their one of their larger facilities. She works as a scientist at Merck. Uh, she's also pursuing her master's degree in cellular and molecular biology, as well as genetics um, at graduate school. So excellence, engagement, experience, empathy, and encouragement. Um, we have 19, we're division three. There are 19 division three athletics. Um, we have a number of clubs. We also have intramural sports, alternative spring break, and it mentions uh, from the large from the large campuses you have just seen, uh, we do have four places to eat on campus. 
Um, pretty much we're just north of Philadelphia. Um, it's, it's 30 minutes to King of Prussia. That actually is about a 15 to 20 minute drive. Philadelphia, 30 minutes, depending on the traffic. Uh, it could be 15 minutes. It could be an hour. Um, but we're about two hours from New York, about an hour and a half from the Pocono Mountains. Um, in all of New Jersey, Ocean City, New Jersey is about two hours away. Uh, Six Flag is about an hour from campus. Basically this year, um, we have rolling admission. Uh, admission decisions are about two weeks after a completed file, nursing and health professionals. There is actually an interview because we are test optional this year and coming up for the fall, we will also be test optional. But at this time we're test optional. So ultimately uh, you can get a decision within two weeks. Uh, that's once everything is complete, including your interview. Um, basically completed application form, official high school transcripts, and we are test optional this year. Uh, tuition and fees, you're looking at 36,650 for tuition for all of our health professional nursing programs. And then 11,970 would be the average price of a student that's living on our campus. And our merit scholarships go the full way from a full tuition presidential all the way down to the uh, Mother Mary, excuse me, Mother Mary Burns scholarship. So I want to slide out there. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them going forward. Take care. Thank you so much, Gwinnett University, Gwinnett Mercy University. And we are going to allow for Sacred Heart to get set up here next and just want to encourage that uh, our attendees type in any questions no question is a bad question and we'd love to hear from you and see where your interests are so we'll leave that over to sacred heart now oh i saw them pop off i'll give you another second there yeah i'm just sharing my screen sorry about that uh, no you're totally fine i saw it on and then off but yeah just continue to ask those questions throughout the night to any institution you'd like Hi, everybody. My name is Gus Fister, and I am an admissions counselor here at Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, here is my contact information for anybody involved. Um, I typically recruit for Essex, Southern Passaic, and Hudson counties in New Jersey. Um, that being said, if you have any questions about the school, I'll be more than happy to answer them outside of those counties as well. Um, so we're just going to dive right in here. Um, some quick facts about Sacred Heart University. We were founded in 1963 by the Diocese of Bridgeport. Um, we are the first Catholic university founded by lay people, and that is how we got our nickname of the Pioneers. Um, additionally, we are the second largest Catholic university in New England. And because of that, it's roughly 5,600 undergrad and 8,000 total with grad. Um, so, our academic overview is we have six colleges of study. We have the College of Arts and Sciences. Within that is our School of Communication, Media and the Arts, as well as our School of Social Work. Um, we also offer the Isabella Farrington College of Education. This is a very unique program because it is a four plus one. Um, and within the additional year, so after you have completed your undergraduate studies, um, you can go on for the additional year and whatever district that you student teach in, in the state of Connecticut, they will pay for 30 out of 39 credits um, to get your master's degree in teaching. So a very cost-effective way to receive a master's in teaching degree in the state of Connecticut. Um, additionally, we have the Jack Welch College of Business and Technology. Within that is our School of Computer Science and Engineering. I'm going to dive deeper into that later on in the presentation and kind of walk you through our new facilities there. Um, additionally, we offer the Davis and Hemley College of Nursing, the College of Health Professions and the St. Vincent's College. Um, we have here at Sacred Heart over 80 majors and concentrations along is undecided. We understand that not every student comes to college with the idea of what they wanna do. So we have discovered multiple programs called Discover You to really help you with that process and work personally with you to make sure you're in a happy environment. Um, additionally, we offer 60 plus masters and doctoral programs and our average class size is about 22 students. So a 13 to one student teacher ratio. I am a recent alum of Sacred Heart and I could say this is probably my favorite aspect um, is this close student to teacher ratio as they really allow to get to know the, your professors. 
Um, getting involved is something you're going to hear on campus over and over again. We have over 60 clubs and organizations here at Sacred Heart. Um, so what I always tell students is if you have a passion, we most likely have a club or an organization for you. If not, you're more than welcome to start it yourself. Um, student government is a big part of who we are as a campus. Um, one of our leadership programs, as well as our academic clubs. Um, we do offer Greek life on campus as well. Um, with 14 sororities and fraternities on campus. We are a Division I NCAA NEC conference um, school. So football, basketball, baseball, golf, we have over 30 teams. Um, and if you're not dedicated to the Division I schedule, which I completely understand, um, we do offer 35 club and intramural sports as well. And that ranges from everywhere from chess to football. So whatever you're interested in. Um, performing arts is an audition based program here at Sacred Heart, so you would have to audition to get in and there are grant opportunities along with that, as well as our volunteer and campus ministry programs, two of our mo most vital programs on campus. Um, so as I mentioned, West Campus is kind of our new hut. It is the former GE headquarters and home to our College of Education, Jack Welch College of Business and Technology, and the School of Computer Science and Engineering. Um, this facility is roughly 66 acres and nearly 600,000 square feet of space. So within that space, we have developed a bunch of new academic programs. So I'm just going to run through a couple of them. One of them is the SHU iHub. This is an 8,000 square foot venue where we use it to test companies, products, and concepts. Um, going along with that is our artificial intelligence labs. So this offers 40 computers with advanced processing and servers. Um, and within that, um, that area, we also offer eye tracking, object recognition, um, video wall controller data and analysis, as long as visual, visualization as well. Um, next, we, we offer the Next Reality Lab. That is a 1,500 square foot augmented virtual and mixed reality lab. Um, this is very equipped with hands-on learning. Computers have augmented reality and virtual reality production, um, 2D and 3D animations as well. Um, and it really works with your hands-on and research that is so vital to STEM majors. Um, additionally, we offer the Cybersecurity Lab. This is one of our new venues and also a 1300 square foot area. Um, offers hands-on learning and also a simulation to cyber threats. So you learn how to in real time deal with those threats. Um, it, is, it has a design response built into it as well as a defense strategy, 40 workstation and high security network to get that hands-on experience. Um, applying to SHU, as I mentioned, uh, we are right now rolling admission. Um, but we are offering our on-campus and virtual tours. Um, so thank you so much. And if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to reach out. All right, thank you, Gus and Sacred Heart University. We are going to allow for uh, DigiPen Institute of Technology to get up and screen share going. And uh, again, if you have any questions, I'd love to see that Q&A box light up. So we'll leave it over to DigiPen Institute of Technology as well. Excellent, thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen now. Hope everybody's doing all right. My name's Nick. I'm here as a representative, like you said, of DigiPen Institute of Technology. Uh, I'm the, the Northeast representative of the United States. We're actually located out here in Washington State, so a little ways away. Uh, but we're a pretty cool school, I like to think. So I'll talk to you all a little bit about what we have. So what is DigiPen? We are a private four-year college, like I said, out here in Redmond, Washington. And we focus on interactive media and technology. And if you think about what interactive media is, it usually manifests as video game development. So we're known as a video game development school. Uh, so if you are, you know, if you're interested in any of the fields that you see on screen here, being computer science, art and animation, game design, or music and sound design, this is actually a really good place to be. Uh, if you want to do any of that, to go into the video game development field. We're a relatively new school, founded in 1988, uh, but we've left a pretty strong imprint on the industry thus far. I'll talk about that as we go along. Like I said, we're just out here in Redmond, Washington, which is north of Bellevue and east of Seattle. That's the landmark most people know. 
we are really close, almost next door with Microsoft. They're our top employer. Uh, we've had dozens, if not hundreds of graduates go to work for Microsoft throughout the years. We've had dozens work on the Minecraft team alone. Our president helped found Nintendo, uh, Nintendo software technologies and we've had plenty of faculty come from Nintendo and plenty of our graduates go to work for Nintendo in various capacities. Uh, but Redmond is just a really great place to be if you're interested in tech or video game development more specifically. This is a phenomenal place to be. We like to flex our muscles a little bit here at DigiPen, so I hope you don't mind if I take some time to do that right now. Uh, we are actually the first college in the world to offer a bachelor's degree in video game programming. We still offer that degree. We've just modernized it throughout the years and it's worked real well for our students. Our graduates in that degree have had good placement rates, good salaries. Uh, and so, like I said, we've just kept it uh, up to date. Uh, the average class size here at DigiPen is about 20 students. Uh, the student teacher ratio is uh, 11 to one. So you do get a lot of personalized instruction while you're here at DigiPen. And you can see on the far right side there, our graduates are credited on more than 1500 commercial video games. Right now, our student body is only about 1,100. We're only about 31 years old. And at the beginning, we only had about five students, right? We're a pretty new, small school. Uh, but so the fact that our graduates are credited on that many games is really quite staggering. And of course, our graduates have gone to work on way more than just video games throughout the years. We've had animators go to work for Funko Pop and Nintendo, or, uh, excuse me, at Nickelodeon, uh, Walt Disney Company, Pixar, all these cool things. We've had computer scientists go to work as uh, programmers all across the country. Uh, we even had a, a computer scientist work on the Lion King remake that came out recently because they were using video game development tools to make that animation. And so they needed computer scientists and we had graduates who were able to do that. Uh, but there's some other more fun things. A lot of our students build games while they're here at DigiPen. In fact, you will be building games while you're here at DigiPen. Our students submit those games sometimes in competitions around the country. You can see at the bottom, the 57 IGF awards. Uh, our students go to the Independent Games Festival and submit their games to competitions. We've won 57 different awards there over the years, which is more than the next 10 schools combined. That is a huge margin of victory. And we're really proud of that. Our students are just up to really good work uh, and we love showing it off. And then to the left of that, we're always within, the, I think the past 10 years, we've been within the top five best video game design schools as viewed by the, the Princeton Review. Oh, I'll hop back here. Something else that's really nice actually that's not on this page is return on investment. Uh, so there was a study done by Georgetown University a little while ago that was looking at return on investment, which means for how much money you pay up front to attend a school, how strong is that degree down the road in terms of salary. DigiPen was number one within Washington State for all four-year colleges and we're within the top 1% of the entire nation. I believe we were ranked 32nd or 33rd. Uh, so that being said, a DigiPen degree is very strong. Uh, and so what's the secret sauce? What is it that actually makes students employable? Uh, really, it's, you know, our degrees is our academic approach. So uh, these are the actual degrees that you can take here at DigiPen. Uh, we have a variety of computer science degrees uh, specializing in various fields, including uh, machine learning, graphics programming, which is the real-time interactive simulation degree, digital audio, if you're interested in that. Uh, but then, of course, we have game design degrees, which is a lot of player psychology. You know, if you're building a, a 2D platformer like Mario, a designer is going to be thinking about the level layout. Is my character going to have one jump or two? Are there going to be power-ups? All that sort of stuff. Art and animation. If you wanted to do the visual art assets that go into making games or animations, then we have a degree for you. And if you wanted to maybe be the composer or sound designer for uh, a video game or other piece of media, we also have a degree program for you. So a variety of science degrees, as well as a couple of bachelor art and fine art degrees. So the academic approach, like I said, really is that secret sauce that makes our graduates employable and gives them those strong salaries. Of course, we have the, the, the fundamentals, you know, going to school, listening to the lecture, doing the homework, but then a large portion is allocated towards uh, project learning. So starting your sophomore year, you're going to be in a cross-departmental team that for a semester to a year and a half actually builds a game. So if you're a game designer, you have an awesome idea for a video game, you have the mechanics all laid out in your mind, but you're not a programmer, but your best friend is, so you get them on board. Maybe you know some musicians, you get some of them on board, you know, you go to the artist next year, you get one of them, bing, bada, boom. That can actually be your team. So like I said, for a semester to a year and a half, you're going to be building those games. So you can expect to have maybe three or four of those under your belt by the time you graduate to actually show off to employers. So not only are you working on your hard skills, which are your, your technical skills, being coding or game design or whatever it may be, 
but you're also working your soft skills, which is how do you communicate with your teammates to meet deadlines? How do you resolve conflicts? How do you, you know, approach the issue of we don't have enough time to put everything in the game that we want to? What are we going to cut? All those things fold into it. Uh, and we've had graduates go on to work for companies uh, who come back and talk to us later saying that when they graduated to the employers, they didn't just feel like college graduates, they felt like college graduates who already had maybe one or two years of industry experience. And again, that's all because our students are already building games there in the industry. If you're looking to apply, there's some pretty specific things you need to do based on the field you're trying to get into. All of that information is on our website. Please feel free to check it out. We're more than happy to talk anytime. Feel free to contact us. I'll be staying around in the chat. Uh, yeah, shoot me a message. I'd love to talk. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you so much, Nick and DigiPen Institute of Technology. Uh, last but not least, we are moving on to SUNY Potsdam, and I'll allow them to uh, get their screen share going. And uh, again, just if you have any questions, make sure that you are putting it in the Q&A chat box there. Again, there is another session tonight for this virtual fair. You can uh, go on to that and register for that at strivescan.com. So we'll leave it over to SUNY Potsdam. All right. Hi guys, uh, just getting some stuff here quickly. There a way to share my screen, Julian? Yes, if you go oh, to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Oh. No problem. And we've got some time too. You're the last one up here. Um, but yeah, I just want to make sure that those questions get in and you guys are refer or addressing the college that you want to answer those questions. I'm sure they'd love to answer anything before they are gone for the evening. And we'll leave it over to you. Okay, guys. So my name is John Lewis. I'm actually one of the admissions counselors here at SUNY Potsdam. So this is actually a great backdrop shot of our campus, Racket River, uh, our, our famous clock tower right in the background, Satterley Hall, um, one of the oldest campuses in the SUNY system, State University of New York. Uh, so we're located up near the Adirondack Park, straight north from New Jersey. Uh, so pretty, pretty fun ride. Another overview shot of our campus. Uh, just to give you a perspective uh, of what we look like, self-contained, uh, can crisscross the entire campus uh, in roughly five to 10 minutes. And we're going to skip over that quickly. Some quick history and facts. We're the oldest and smallest in the SUNY system of four years. Uh, institutions, we have 3,500 undergraduate students. We have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. We are rated number one in food in the SUNY system. So if you guys love good food, uh, we got you covered. Um, anything from gluten-free, vegetarian, vegan, Italian options, uh, Mediterranean, hearth-baked pizzas, chicken quesadillas, Starbucks on campus, and a Tim Hortons. Uh, I think I'm making myself hungry right now. Um, we have over 400 fine arts events and performances a year. Uh, so we are a true liberal arts campus in that aspect. We do have 17 intercollegiate sports teams. So anything from softball, volleyball, soccer, lacrosse, ice hockey, um, basketball team uh, and some others. Um, we have four colleges within a 10 mile radius. So we also have Clarkson University, St. Lawrence University and SUNY Canton all within 10 miles. Um, so even if we don't have a class, you can take up one of the classes at the other institutions. We have some cross registration going on there. Uh, so that's really neat. Uh, we are located just outside the beautiful Adirondack Mountains and some great pictures to the right of these. So again, snapshots around the campus, our cool greenhouse with some students doing hydroponics, uh, our famous Racket River in the background. Maybe you want to do some kayak and canoeing um, and just students having fun around campus. Okay, academic opportunities. We have 54 majors, 60 minors. We have three divisions, three schools on our campus, Crane School of Music, first and foremost, School of Arts and Sciences, and the School of Education and Professional Studies. So again, if you're somebody that's passionate about music, a uh, classically trained program, that would be the Crane School of Music. Arts and Sciences, kind of self-explanatory, and School of Education and Professional Studies, if you're looking to be a teacher. Um, we also have something called the Lowheed Center for Applied Learning. In there, we do internships, service learning, student research, student fellowship, study abroad, career services, and we even have our Law Enforcement Training Institute for those of you thinking criminal justice path. 
We also have a robust library system as well on campus. Now, what about involvement on our campus? We have roughly 100 clubs and organizations, anything from the Anthropology Club, ROTC, Black Student Alliance, Cheerleading, Gender and Sexuality Alliance, Rugby, Acapella Groups, Ultimate Frisbee. We even have Harry Potter Quidditch. Um, so there's a lot going on. Uh, we even have a cool group called Stitch and Bitch. Uh, they knit, crochet, and complain about life. Uh, so that's really neat. We also have many campus life events. Those are workshops, concerts, trips, athletic events. Um, again, we are D3 athletics, but we also have intramural and club sports if you're not looking for uh, the competition part. We also have a climbing wall, an ice arena, an indoor heated pool, and a state-of-the-art fitness center. Uh, so again, those are all at your disposal as a student of Potsdam. And for a lot of our students, how do I even apply to SUNY Potsdam, right? We're going to look at the Common App or SUNY application. We're on either, does not matter. Um, SUNY application for, would be for state schools. We have a rolling admission process. And we have an application fee of roughly $50. Uh, required of materials would be your official high school transcript, an essay, and one letter of recommendation from an academic teacher or your school counselor. And we also set up a quick and easy access to your portal. Uh, for any application updates and enrollments that will be emailed to you as soon as we get your application, you'll get that. Now, generally for review, uh, we're overall looking at your six semesters with GPA. Average accepted student GPA, two pots is right around an 88, but again, we look high and low. So um, we've had students even into the 70s range apply. So uh, again, we're looking at a holistic approach to your application. Rigor, types of classes you had in your high school, uh, how have you done in the classes? Did you take any AP, IB, Klepper college credits? And we do take those in as well. Uh, so score three better on the AP, uh, do good in a college class, um, do good on your IB or Klepper, and we will give you credit for that. Uh, how's your recommendation letter look? And content and clarity of your essay. Uh, we also have some really neat special admissions programs. CUSP is for early college and accelerated grads. So you might be graduating high school a year early, or maybe you want to do your last year of high school at Potsdam. Uh, so that's an early college program with us. We also have a bridges program for students that are a little bit weaker academically. So we want to help them uh, to succeed. So they get extra tutoring, academic support services. Um, and that's our mission to help you succeed. Now, the EOP Educational Opportunity Program is financially based and also helps our students as well academically uh, with extra needed support. So kind of similar to bridges, but just with a financial uh, requirement in there for, for families in need. Now, if you are a transfer student, Common App or SUNY App, rolling admission, $50, high school transcript, official college transcripts, um, supplemental, and or mid-semester grades, we will let you guys know. Um, academic review, we're basically looking at at least 2.0 or higher GPA, and our average accepted student GPA in is a 3.0. Now, credit review, we're doing a credit evaluation emailed soon after our offer of admission to know what you have review closely and ask any questions if applicable, and course equivalency tables, transfer articulation agreements, and FAQs are available on our website, potsdam.edu forward slash admissions slash apply slash transfer. Now for accepted students, um, we are looking at, oh, I think we skipped over that one, uh, financial aid and merit scholarship. This is a huge one for you guys. So right now for um, any student that's out of state, uh, and this is with tuition, fees, room, and board. We are roughly 32,521. Again, do your FAFSA. And merit scholarships are huge, potsdam.edu forward slash scholarships. So make sure to hit that link, bookmark it, add it as a favorite. A lot of very generous offers, up to $7,500 per year right now for some out-of-state students. Um, and again, accepted students, you know, review everything, understand, get your deposit in, uh, and complete your FAFSA. And I think uh, Julian is uh, on here already. Uh, ready to roll. So, um, but anytime you guys have any questions, we're always here for you. Admissions at potsdam.edu. And uh, I believe we have on our last page, um, let me just go here. There we go. Uh, Be Potsdam Proud. Uh, we are on social media Instagram, SUNY Potsdam, Twitter at SUNY Potsdam 1816, Facebook, SUNY Potsdam. And we also have some great videos on our YouTube channel. Just Google SUNY Potsdam to get a better scope of things that are going on on our campus. Awesome. Thank you so much to all our presenters tonight. I am just going to go over a few 
closing remarks uh, before we let you go. And that is that there's going to be a four question survey that's going to appear on your screen as soon as you close this window. And make sure you sign up for other sessions tonight uh, at ShriveScan.com. If you want to look back on this recording, it's going to be available on the same page that you registered within about a week. Good luck on the college search process and have a great rest of the week.